Welcome. In this screencast, I will be talking about workflow support in WSO2 Identity Server. I am Johan Nalathambi, Senior Technical Lead for the WSO2 Identity Server. Traditionally, it is the responsibility of the IT department of an organization to manage its digital identities and their respective access rights. For example, new account creation, account modification, account deletion, changes to an account's access rights, etc. are some of the foremost responsibilities of an IT department. In today's digital enterprises, identity and access management is becoming a more and more complex process. It is common to see multiple processes getting triggered, each having multiple steps which involves interacting with multiple people and processes before an IAM operation is complete. A typical IAM workflow would consist of the following steps. There will be an initiator who initiates an IAM operation, which will trigger one or more workflows. A workflow would consist of one or more steps, and each step would consist of one or more options. Workflows are generally long-running processes. Once all the workflows are completed and corresponding callback events have been received by the system, the operation is persisted in the system. For example, consider an account creation scenario for a HR manager recruited to the HR department. The first step of this process would be to collect information about the employee that is pertinent to create an account for the employee. Once the required information is submitted to the IT department, they'll start processing it. The IT department will then go through a rigorous verification approval process which may involve paper forms, emails, telephone calls, correction forms, etc. Since the employee joining is a HR manager, he or she needs to be provisioned to an administrator role in PeopleHR, a human resource management system. Since PeopleHR contains sensitive information about employees' past performance, etc., it is required to get the explicit approval from the HR director before giving administrative access to PeopleHR. For this, a sub-workflow is kicked off. At the end of it all, the account is created. Imagine if this process is done manually for each such request. It is inefficient for the IT department and kills the productivity of the said employee. This is one of the identity and access management problems digital enterprises face today and it is exactly what WSO2 Identity Server's workflow management is set out to solve. In the above user creation scenario, the initiator of the workflow could be one of several actions. A user can be added to the system either by a user admin who enters information manually using the admin console, or a user could self-register him or herself via the user portal, or a user could be just in time provisioned to the system during a federated login, or users can be added in bulk to the system. In any of the above cases, the condition to trigger the workflow can be met and a workflow can be triggered. The workflow process could be a human task approval, BPMN process or a BPL process. When a callback event is received on completion of the workflow, if the workflow was successful, the user creation is performed and the operation is persisted in the system. All other pre and post user creation activities are also performed. If the workflow was unsuccessful, the operation is aborted. So what are workflows in the context of identity and access management? Workflows in the context of identity and access management, or IAM, refer to the business process automation of managing identities and access rights in an enterprise. Workflows are available in the WSO2 Identity Server from version 5.1.0 onwards. It comes with an embedded human task server and it can also integrate seamlessly with the WSO2 Business Process Server or BPS. It supports approval workflows for user and group related operations. Now I am going to take you through a demo and thereafter a couple of more slides explaining each step of the demo in detail. First. I create a workflow definition for new employee creation. For this workflow definition, 
I am going to have only one step. I select IT Manager as the approval role for this step. I select Embedded BPS Profile as my workflow engine. Now I am done creating my first workflow definition. Now I am going to create my second workflow definition for new HR manager creation. For this workflow definition, I am going to have two steps. For the first step, I choose HR Director to be the approval role. For the second step, I choose the user Bradley Cooper who is the VP of HR to be the approval user. Here again, I select Embedded BPS Profile as the workflow engine. Now I am done creating my second workflow definition as well. Now I am going to engage the created workflows to operations. First. I engage the new employee workflow to add user operation. Next, I engage the new HR manager workflow also to add use operation. Except this time, I also insert another condition saying the workflow must be triggered only if the list of roles contains HR manager. Now I am going to create a user named Brad Pitt who belongs to the HR manager role. You can see the user Brad Pitt has been created in the system but is in an inactive state and all the options against the user are greyed out. You can also see that there is a workflow operation that is pending approval. It is also shown that the particular operation is waiting on two workflows. Now I am going to log in as the user Will Smith who is in IT manager role and approve the new employee workflow task. Now you can see the new employee workflow task has been approved. However, the new HR manager workflow task is still pending approval. Still you can see that the user is inactive because there is another workflow task to be approved. Now I log in as the user Jennifer Lawrence who is in HR Director role and approve the first step of the new HR Manager workflow task. Since another step of this workflow is pending to be approved, the user Brad Pitt is still inactive and the workflows list still shows one task as pending. Now I can log in as the user Bradley Cooper who is the VP of HR 
and approve the second step of the new HR manager workflow task. Now you can see that both the workflow tasks have been approved and the user Brad Pitt is in active state like other users in the system. Now let us take a deeper look at the configuration supported by the WSO2 Identity Server for workflow management. This is where you can add new WSO2 BPS profiles to point to external WSO2 BPS clusters. This will show you the list of WSO2 BPS profiles added to the system. The embedded BPS profile comes by default and cannot be modified or deleted. The embedded BPS profile represents the human task components that come installed as part of the identity server. However, we don't recommend using the embedded human task components for large-scale scenarios with high throughput requirements. The workflow process template that comes out of the box with Identity Server is a multi-step, multi-option workflow template based on users and roles. From this interface, you can add any number of steps. Each step can contain any number of options. An option could be a user or a role. If it's a user, the exact user must approve or deny the operation. If it's a role, any user who belongs to the role can approve or deny the operation. If there are multiple options, one of those users or someone in one of those roles must approve or deny the operation. If there are multiple steps in the workflow, all the steps must be completed in order to persist the operation in the system. When creating a workflow definition in the system, this is where you select the WSO2 BPS profile to be used. Once a workflow definition is created, you can engage that workflow to an operation. The identity server out of the box supports workflows only for user store operations. Once you pick the operation category and the operation name, you can select the condition to apply the workflow. You can either apply the workflow for all kind of requests that belong to the operation name you selected, or you can filter by certain values of the input parameters of the operation, or you can even give a XPath to be evaluated dynamically on the operation payload. These options allow workflows to be triggered based on runtime dynamic values of an operation. If a workflow is triggered for a user creation, then that user name is listed with a special symbol indicating that the operation is pending approval from a workflow. All the options against the user is grayed out. If the operation was approved, this entry becomes normal as any other entry above it. If the operation was denied, the entry is removed from the listing. IAM operations with workflows can be monitored. An IAM operation can trigger multiple workflow processes and each of them can be monitored individually. Each individual workflow has to be completed successfully in order for the IAM operation to be persisted. IAM operations waiting on a workflow completion event can be deleted before getting persisted in the system. Users who are in the capacity of approving or denying IAM operations can log into the user portal, go to pending approvals and see all the workflows waiting on their approval. The user can select a workflow and approve or deny it. These are the permissions that are needed to work with workflows in Identity Server. The workflow management permissions are needed to work with the management console to create, modify, view, delete, workflow definitions, associations, WSO2 BPS profiles, and monitor or delete workflow requests. Approval permissions are needed for whoever user in the capacity of approving or denying an operation by logging into the user portal. This is a component diagram of the workflow architecture in Identity Server. As you can see, it is a very extensible framework we have to plug in connectors to support additional custom use cases. The workflow execution manager in the center of the diagram is responsible for handling workflow initiation requests, triggering workflow processes, managing pending workflows, and correlating and responding back on callback events on workflow process completion to the initiator. A workflow request handler is responsible to initiate workflows and handle callback events. 
Out of the box, Identity Server has one workflow request handler which is responsible for initiating workflow requests for all kind of user and group management operations. Additional workflow request handlers can be plugged in to support operations such as policy management, certificate management, etc. In Identity Server's workflow architecture, a workflow is a combination of a workflow template and a workflow executor. An executor is responsible to communicate with the workflow engine. The default executor supports human task approvals with WSO2 Business Process Server. Additional executors can be plugged in to support standards such as BPMN, custom Java code and even non-WSO2 Business Process Servers. A template is responsible for specifying what needs to happen in the workflow. The default template is a multi-step, multi-option approval template based on users and roles. The default template is also parameterized. It contains parameters to specify configuration time static values such as the WSO2 BPS profile to be used, number of steps in the workflow, the users or roles in each step, etc. This allows the identity server's administrators to set up a workflow in a couple of minutes without any knowledge about business process execution language or human tasks. Thank you.